Needless to say, your typical superhero movie is a fairly bloodless affair. Sure, these films can rack up body counts, but much of the grit and grime of the action gets left on the cutting room floor. And this is for good reason, as most of these movies aren't just for adults, but children as well. But with that said, today we're going to be looking at those rare superhero flicks that let the red stuff fly. We got hacked off limbs, melted faces, and half the bodies flying all over the place. This is 10 gruesome superhero movies to satisfy gore hounds. In a post-apocalyptic wasteland in 1997, a comic book fan adopts the persona of his favorite hero to save his enthusiastic new friend and fight a tyrannical overlord. A ludicrously entertaining mashup of kids' action-adventure fair and Paul Verhoeven-esque gore-fest, Turbo Kid lampoons a very specific niche and does it wonderfully, serving up a stylish superhero movie in its own right. How much movies such as this often coast on nostalgic goodwill, yet this is a genuine, well-crafted movie in every respect, from the performances, especially a delicious Michael Ironside, to the cinematography, editing, effects, and the entrancing Sith score. Hell, even the heroes are legitimately interesting in what could so easily have been a hollow, soulless tribute to 80s schlock. <laughs> the film that more or less solidified trauma as a Z-movie powerhouse, The Toxic Avenger follows Melvin, a 98-pound weakling janitor in a hell spot who is constantly persecuted by a bunch of bullies. After tricking him into thinking that a girl is interested in him, a prank with a pink tutu and stuffed goat goes horribly wrong and Melvin falls out of a window into a vat of noxious chemicals. He is transformed into the hideously disfigured Toxic Avenger, who has considerable superpowers. With these powers, he cleans up the town of Tromaville by disposing of criminals, no-gooders, and corrupt corporate types in hilariously violent ways. If you've ever watched a superhero movie and felt that it needed more elderly slave-owning dry cleaners being stuffed into washing machines, then this is the crime-fighting hero saga for you. Oh, I'm not dicky, I'm not washy. Blade 2 remains not only a great superhero flick, but a truly frightening monster movie. The blood-drenched action horror film was helmed by director Guillermo del Toro, who was a lesser-known genre filmmaker at the time, but so steeped in the world of nightmares that his brooding sense of dread permeates every frame. Wesley Snipes reprises his role as the roundhouse kicking half-human titular protagonist. This time around, our hero is pitted against the new vampire community called the Reapers, who attack both humans and vampires. Blade, along with an elite vampire force, is asked to wipe out the Reaper's population. Insert mayhem. Can you blush? <laughs> Talk about a comeback story. Dread completely surprised us back in 2012 and took the world of comic book adaptations by storm. After Sylvester Stallone nearly killed the character's hope of cinematic greatness, You killed innocent people! The means to an end! You started a massacre! I caused the revolution! You betrayed the law! War! Carl Urban entered the picture and completely revitalized the dystopian cop. Set solely within a massive high-rise, the film keeps its titular character confined and constantly outgunned, which basically allows him to die hard his way through hordes of bad guys, intent on taking him and his partner down. Featuring awesome slow-mo gunplay, a grimy aesthetic, and a nearly pitch-perfect villain in the form of Lena Headey's Mama. Dread is a blood-soaked cocktail with a stylistic kicker. It's no surprise that a Punisher film would be on this list. By the very nature of the character, any Punisher film is going to be brutal. The most brutal of the films featuring the character is none other than Punisher Warzone, directed by Alexei Alexander. The film was released and forgotten pretty quickly due to its poor reviews and audiences not be able to get past the campiness. 
No matter what you might think of the storyline or acting, the film is definitely savage. Frank Castle goes through the film killing people in horrific ways. Limbs fly off, faces get mangled, and blood is splattered all over the place. This is a no holds barred version of the Marvel character. The amount of over the top violence in the film makes the Thomas Jane 2004 Punisher film look like a kid's movie. I'm calling this in. Put your hands behind your back. David Urovskis. Nasty piece of work hits a bloody sweet spot between superhero and horror. The fun of Brightburn is the way it plays with the tropes. An extraterrestrial boy crash lands in rural Kansas and is raised by two human parents. But instead of growing up to believe in truth, justice, and the American way, young Brendan Brer instead believes in violently murdering the crap out of people with his laser eyes. The movie eventually morphs into slasher territory fueled by kryptonite, and while it never quite surpasses its own elevator pitch, it never really needs to either. Sometimes a simple premise really is just that killer. Matthew Vaughn's adaptation of Mark Miller's comic book series takes place in a world with no superheroes. The heroes the movie focuses on are, instead, normal citizens turned vigilantes. One character is a normal high school student who, after being severely injured on his first outing, develops a higher tolerance for pain. Another pair are a father and daughter who, driven by the need to avenge a dead family member, have become incredibly proficient with all sorts of weapons. Like all of Vaughn's movies, it's a stylish ride, but also extremely gory and affecting as it digs into how trying to be a real life superhero would affect a normal person's life. Before he directed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, James Gunn directed Super, the superhero version of Taxi Driver. Rain Wilson plays a man who thinks he's been touched by the tentacled hand of God, but who probably has lost his mind. So he puts on a costume and starts hitting people on the head if he thinks they're criminals. Along the way he picks up a sidekick who's more interested in the petty side of violence and the kinky side of cosplay. And together they learn the hard way that maybe they should have never ever have done this. Face the wrath of the Crimson Bolt! When it comes to an actor redeeming himself in the eyes of comic book fans, few are as fortunate as Ryan Reynolds, who starred in not one, not two, but three of the most hated superhero movies of our time. 2004's Blade Trinity, 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine, and 2011's Green Lantern. Finally, Reynolds struck gold with 2016's Deadpool. The title hero breaks the fourth wall, drops meta jokes about his place in the superhero genre, and exacts bloody revenge with his relentless flair. And all of it feels like a loving middle finger to the conventions that have come to define the superhero genre. The way we... Why? You were droning on! Logan takes the basic plot structure of the classic western Shane and transplants it into a comic book setting. Set in the near future, the film picks up with an aging Wolverine whose adamantium skeleton is slowly weakening him, and a Professor X on his deathbed who is sadly succumbing to dementia. Wolfie reluctantly helps his clone daughter, who he only just found out existed, to get across the country, and they leave a trail of blood and guts along the way. It was a fitting, if heartbreaking, end to Hugh Jackman's on-screen journey as our favorite berserker hero. What about you guys? Are there any films that we left out? Let us know in the comment section below.